Chad amnesty calls for justice one year after bloody demonstration. The families of the victims of the crackdown on a demonstration against the extension of military rule in Chad, which left more than 100 people dead a year ago, are still waiting for justice, Amnesty International deplored on Friday. On 20th October 2022, police and soldiers opened fire on young demonstrators protesting against the two-year extension of a transition led by the young General Mahmoud Idris Debi Itino. He was proclaimed head of state by the army in April 2021 following the death of, the, of his father, who had already ruled the country with an iron fist for 30 years. The security forces responded by firing live ammunition at the demonstrators, killing and injuring many people, wrote the international organization in a statement marking the anniversary of the demonstration. The repression left more than 100 people dead and nearly 1,000 injured. Amnesty continued, adding, although the authorities immediately promised an investigation, all we have seen so far are unfair trials of demonstrators held behind closed doors and the absence of serious investigations into those alleged responsible for the killings and injuries. It is imperative that the Chadian authority expect their commitment to justice, Amnesty wrote. Propelled to the head of the country on 20th April 2021 by a junta of 15 generals, Mahmoud Debi immediately promised to return power to civilians through free elections after a 18-month transition period. But 18 months later, at the beginning of October 2022, he extended it by two years. On the 20th of the same month, hundreds of protesters took the streets to protest. The government acknowledged the death of around 50 people, but at least 128 died that day, mainly in Germany, according to a National Human Rights Commission. Huge raids also targeted nearly a thousand young people and opposition leaders, most of whom fled into exile. The government acknowledged the arrest of 621 young people, including 83 minors all of whom were taken to a sinister prison in Kolotolo, in the middle of the desert 600 kilometers from the capital, where they were tried a month and a half later behind closed doors without lawyers and sentenced to prison for attempted insurrection for the most part. Thursday, the eve of the first anniversary, the government claimed that on 20th October 2022, the demonstrators had savagely killed six members of the security forces, including three in the Jamena on a October, at least 72 young activists and supporters of an opposition party, Le Transmartel, were arrested in the Jamena and are being held in Comunicado by the government. On 8th October last year, at least 72 young activists and supporters of an opposition party, Le Transformatel, were arrested in the Jamena and are being held in Comunicado by the government. Liberians prepare for a possible runoff election next month. The main candidate of the opposition unity party, former Vice President Joseph Boakai, has called for the country to come together. Denise Nipsey has more from Monrovia. The National Elections Commission, known as NECFA, is the announced results covering 99.97% of total votes from the country's October 10 election. Incumbent President George Weah of the Coalition for Democratic Change, CDC, received 43.84% and former Vice President Joseph Boakai of the United Party has 43.34%. This indicates that neither of the candidates may obtain the 50 plus one needed to emerge a winner as required by the constitution of Liberia. This means Liberians will have a runoff election on November 7. Addressing his supporters Thursday in a thank you message, UP Senate Bearer Ambassador Boakar said the slim margin between him and incumbent Wea is a manifestation that Liberians are set to make Wea a one-term president. As it is now evident from the result of the presidential election announced by the Electoral Commission, the National Election Commission, NEC, the Liberian people, 
in their righteous way, absurd than them we are. A clear warning that his days of presidency are numbered, and very soon the final verdict will be delivered to make President We are a one term Buaka said that in order for the country to develop, Liberians will need to work together. To achieve these lofty goals, as I've always argued, we need all and one thing I know very well is that. All the talents and ideas we need to build our country cannot be found in any single party, tribe, county, religion, or region. That's why I am committed to forming a government of inclusion. Lawrence Yelu is the executive director of Accountability Lab Liberia, a global network that supports civic action teams to promote transparency, accountability, and social change. He says Boaka's message of inclusion is welcoming. From the beginning, it was more a jury or job the ruling establishment. And then I just thought his call for inclusion uh, is something that every Liberian uniform, I think he talked more about, is a wonderful former governor of inclusion of competence and of course across regions. That call, if translated into governance, could be better for the country. Meanwhile, Liberians remain hopeful for a better future as they await the National Elections Commission to declare a presidential election runoff. For VOS Daybreak Africa, I'm Denise Nipsing in Morovia, Liberia. The main opposition party in Zimbabwe, Citizens Coalition for Change, also known as Triple C, says it will embark on nationwide demonstrations to express its discontent over the August polls it describes as not free, fair, and credible. Rutendo Manwari has more from Hurare. Addressing the media in Harare Wednesday, the deputy spokesperson for the Citizens Coalition for Change Triple C, or Stalos Gifti Siziba, says disgruntled Zimbabweans will be taking to the streets. The current government in its composition has no mandate from the people, and Zimbabweans across continue to organize because it's not a partisan issue, it's not a Triple C issue. Zimbabweans have uh, the section 59 of the Zimbabwean constitution giving Zimbabweans the right to peacefully, peacefully express themselves against uh, the displeasure of what transpired on the 23rd of August 2023. Section 59 of the Zimbabwe Constitution gives citizens the right to demonstrate and petition. The Triple C has continued with its calls for fresh polls run by a non-partisan body, with the party alleging that the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission failed to hold a credible vote. Farai Marapira is the acting director of information for the ruling Zan PF party. The Triple C has got a right to engage in any activities it so chooses, as long as they're within the purview of the law. So um, they they're free to do anything they want, as long as it is legal. However, Foreign Affairs Minister Aaron Murwira suggested in a short briefing to African ambassadors that protesters would be punished. As in previous instances, government will not tolerate any actions aimed at disturbing the peace under the guise of democratic political processes. The Zimbabwe Electoral Commission declared Munangagwa winner of the August presidential poll with 52.6% of the vote, while the leader of the opposition, Triple C, is said to have earned 44%. The opposition rejected the results and are demanding fresh polls. Several observer missions said the polls were compromised by irregularities, including groups from the Southern African Development Community, the African Union, COMESA, the European Union, the Commonwealth and the U.S. Some of the observers also say voters were intimidated by Forever Associates of Zimbabwe, a shadowy group affiliated with the ruling party that was conducting exit surveys as people voted.